and welcome to World Sports Show. I'm your host, Charlie Flo, with John DeCrucio working aboard. It is November the 7th, 2016, a crisp, cool Monday evening in Philadelphia. A lot of historic events going on in the city as we speak. I like that. I like that you're that you're uh, hosting the show and I'm working aboard. Yeah, well, you'll be co-hosting too, so well, don't don't be shy. Hey, thanks, bud. <laughs> thanks for the invite. Well, all I see is John's hands and fingers moving up and down the board. That he also is a multitasker. I just I just had to sound good. Yeah, it's tough it's tough to sit here without messing around with the board. That's why if you hear some pops and pings, it's me hitting a button. Yeah, it's a crazy, <laughs> crazy night in Philadelphia just to get here. Oh uh, my goodness gracious! All the <laughs> political stuff going on here. Streets are crowded, especially near the station down here in Seventh and Market. Is it Seventh and? Well, right at the Market Independence Chesley? Hall. So. so, so basically, the cops got every corner blocked off down here for. This traffic. is the safest place to be right now. <laughs> and then, if you guys listen close, you can maybe hear the crowd roar. Yeah, we've been here in the building shaking a little bit. You got close to a million some people right there at the Independence Lawn and Independence Mall Lawn, and then Obama speaking, Hillary Clinton speaking, and Bruce Springsteen in the house. We're trying to get him in the studio later tonight. We're working on that. Yeah, it's, don't hold your breath. No, <laughs> the boss. So yeah, it's it's a very historic time, and that's the neat part that really hit me driving into the studio, or I could say halfway driving to the studio because I parked about two miles out and walked in. That's all you can do down here. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's it is interesting that we live a stone's throw from the Liberty Bell and Independence Hall is is I mean you can see it from the studio and that, that part just does does kind of get you that you are broadcasting from such an historic place and such a historic event going on and we are in on the eve of election night so it's just this an evening where a lot of political news going on out there so what we won't bore you too much with that no you know <laughs> i'm sure that everybody needs a little break from the political ads and yeah we ain't gonna slam nothing in. down your throat tonight well you gotta listen to a little soccer for a little bit a <laughs> little little soccer chat here and there so yeah maybe it's your relief from all the political ads on the interwebs tv radio you're not gonna hear any of that we're gonna be talking a good solid hour soccer community events we're gonna throw some food in there because any event that I attend, I make sure to hit the food first. That's funny. We're offering a public public uh, alternative <laughs> announcement, whatever you want to call it. A public yeah. alternative announcement. Man. Alternative um, break from all the craziness. So, But, yeah, it's been a, our third week here, WPPM in Philly. Everybody listening, 106.5 on the FM dial. And also for tuning in, thank you again on the web, getting people hitting us in. You know, we can – Getting a mailbag at worldsportshow.com. That's our mailbag, and you can check that out. Send us some email. Send us whatever you want. Take some feedback. Yeah, if you want to listen to us on the interwebs, you're driving down the street right now at home, and you need to relocate for the rest of the evening, easy to find us, phillycam.org slash radio slash listen. Couldn't be an easier link. No. <laughs> I've had to give out some very hard links before, some yeah, places we've been before. Sending out links. <laughs> but, you know, as far as being, you know, geographically – well, let, let me try and rephrase that. The frequency, how it bounces out to yeah. the inner city in Philadelphia. You know, I, I get it listening on the way home. I get it pretty far out there, you know, maybe 10 miles out from, you know, if people are familiar with the city, all the way out to Route 1. Yeah, me and you 76. live in the opposite direction. You head north, I head south. I live That's in South right. Philly. So it's it's always good to reach the community. And our community is packed right now. You and I were trying to do the numbers earlier. It might be close to a million people. Here in Sitter City at this moment. The visitors in, in yeah, you count block everybody. area. Yeah. yeah, it's crowded down here. So hang out, listen to the show, stay where you are. You know, hey, you can put the political stuff on your TV screen, but listen to us. We're a better soundtrack. I guarantee it. Yeah. I'm going to yell at you. We're going <laughs> to yell at each other tonight. <laughs> so a lot went on in the city this past weekend. A um, lot in the soccer community. A lot in the soccer world throughout North America. I think the big thing that happened Saturday was the Unity Cup, and then they had the Parade of Nations, and then they had the Gateway of Nations at Lot M next to the Philly Stadium where they had several food trucks, vendors, got to sample several types of food. You know me, I'm going to sample about every food truck there. Yeah, had a lot of college soccer going on, had yeah. pro-level soccer. You know, it's the you know now on pretty much everybody's TV for free. You get European soccer, you get premiership, prim- yeah. is it the premiership? Yeah. The Z Premiership. But yeah, it's, um, you know, we were talking last week. Even, you know, you can get your weekend 
middle of the night fix with Australian League soccer. So it's yeah. Once that league kicks off, which it has kicked off already, you know, right. with with a lot of the women's players in the professional leagues playing down, and I know Milburn's a team that's already starting to grab a lot of attention. I think that that's the team, Milburn. Yeah. Also, you know, we, we talk about the mailbag, you know, mailbag of World Sports. I try and plug it every time, but it's a good way for everybody out there listening to send in feedback, send in, you know, we're thick skin. We can take a joke. If we're not having a, a good five minutes, let us know. Hey, you guys need to this Pep is us up we, a little bit, man. This is what we need to talk about. Hey, we, we contour show for you guys out there listening. You know, I can call Charlie anytime I want. You know, we can go from there. But, yeah, send us in feedback, good or bad. Send it to us questions. live. We check it. We check it, and then that's what we try and do. We try and feature some good questions, try and give a little bit of random thought and, you know, talk some technical, tactical soccer. Even even it doesn't have to be a question we say. It can be advice. You want to give us some advice? What uh, you want to hear on the show? Like I said, you know, advice I've learned from every coach is if you're not learning as a coach, you just stop. Just stop. Quit. It's true. It's true. Like you listen to your players as a coach, so you listen to your audience as, as a broadcaster. That's it. I, I take the good and the bad. You have to. Hey, coach, you're not doing too good today. Hey, at least know why. Why is that? Hey, you got to do this better. Hey, I'm, I'm going to write it down. I don't think it even goes hand in hand when you look at a lot of coaching. And when you are on the other end, you're the pupil, you're the player of, I had some very open coaches and I had some very coaches. This It's my way or the highway. But I've learned in the coaching world, it's always good to get your players interaction. And the same thing with goes on radio is just you want to know how to make it better. And there's a lot of things that players see that we don't see as coaches. That's right. I mean, even getting, you know, I don't want to go too far in before we start getting into uh, the real soccer talk, like, yeah. you know, our, our local teams. But, you know, being a soccer coach, which me and you both are, takes a little bit of a psychologist, psychiatrist. Uh, you you wear it. many hats during a game. Many different skill sets, which I don't think I'm a pro at any one, but you got to put it together and you got to look at the big picture. I mean, you know, you got to find a way to get your players to play. You got to find a way to get your players to learn. And, you know, the main thing is when you talk to, I say, the better coaches is basically you're making your players better people all the way around, on and yeah. off the field. So, uh, take And it that transcends. I mean, we've seen it in the coaching world. You know, I'm going to take this a little bit with you, what you got with Run With It, that you've looked at a lot of players that have become successful coaches, and, and they take it a lot to how they were coached, that's right. how they were handled, and how you manage people. I think that's the biggest thing I've learned in coaching is, how you manage other people. There are so many things that are out of your control as a coach that you cannot determine the outcome, whether ball bounces here or there. You can't actually kick the ball for the player. That's right. You can show them how to, That's it. but it's how you handle adversity. Every coach can pump his fist when they score a goal and win. That's the easy part. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, you know, it's on those 100-degree or 90-degree days when yeah. you're sweating out there, you know, the training goal where you're going to pump your fist. So, yeah, exactly. So, But it's just it's – also, it's interesting talking to people and they're asking, so, you know – why do you really have a passion for talking about soccer on the radio? You know, because basically the way me and you look at it and the way a lot of people with soccer is, is a language that, you know, take example, Unity Cup here in Philadelphia this past weekend is you got many different people out there, different languages. You don't have to speak the language. The language is the game. You know, the same with music. You don't have to know music. You play music together. Yep. So basically we're talking a language, which is a sport. And, you know, it can, you know, Philadelphia is – one of the biggest melting pots in the world. And, oh, it's, it's it's amazing. You know, one ball, people can go out there, no matter who it is, and just basically, you know, speak the language. Yeah. So it's something that we're trying to uh, we're trying to speak the language and you know trying to paint the picture of it in here. It's almost like we we kind of talk about when you're watching soccer, we speak in formation. You and I were talking on the phone before the show. Like, did That's you right. see what formation they were running? You see what formation he was running, they were running, and what coach they were doing. It, it's neat that. You could have a translator, and you could have almost the same conversation with ten different languages, and they all saw the same thing. Right. So, yep. and, it, you know, speaking of formations, it's like, why, why do we talk formations? And, and that goes down to like, is it a cultural thing? Is it like, um, do they play that formation because, you know, the way it's done in that country? Or is it something that they have to adapt to here? So yeah, that, like, that becomes another conversation within, you know, you have players that come to our leagues. We have the NWSL on the women's side and the MLS on the men's side that, some players are a star in their leagues, and they come to America, they can't hack it. The one thing that the MLS and NWSL show in common, speed and physicality. Yeah, American it's... players hit hard. I mean, we had, you know, last week in studio, you had a couple of your, uh, your players. Yeah. Who you coach, and one of the questions was with the difference between coming here and playing. In, yeah, he played it from, from France, one of my players. Comes from France, and it was the, the athleticism in the game. And that's one thing, you know, growing up and in, in hearing, especially in Philadelphia, is – 
you don't play soccer all year round. It's, you know, you play basketball, you play football, whatever it may be, hockey. So you're developing a, a skill set, which is more than soccer. So they're, you're being preached, hey, be, you know, athleticism, be, be that athlete. And it transcends the soccer. So we got athletes here, and I'm sure um, that's something that – we could talk on from the youth level all the way up to the pro level where we got to take that advantage from on the national stage. Well, that goes into the bait where you hear a lot of these coaches that want their kids. We meet the hardcore coaches that I say jokingly, like, get a life, dude. You know, it's it's a game. But we, we've met these youth coaches that, you know, if you if you look at the soccer community, they say there's fall league, there's spring league, and then they have summer tournaments. And then some of them put them in, like, futsal indoor league. So these kids really are playing four seasons. Right. Now, I'm the opposite. I, I like – you know, I was a kid kind of like you. I grew up playing all four or five sports. You know, every season, this is baseball season, this is basketball, this is football season. Hey, track and that, field. You know. Yeah. And you develop different skills, and then you hone on one you like. I know some of the coaches that are hardcore give their players a hard time. Like, oh, he's got to go to lacrosse. Oh, he's got to go to baseball. He's got to go to basketball. They kind of, I've seen coaches put the players down for, I'm like, dude, explore, try it out. And I think that the skill sets they learned at schools can transition. You become a better overall athlete. I mean, say, say for example, basketball. You know, the kid can work on his footwork. And like you said, you see these coaches that are they're so hardcore. To me, it's about developing the player and developing their love for the game, That's not right. developing what kind of cup or state championship can I win with this team. Right. I mean, if if the kids say you got a young kid, yeah. younger, like, you know, you, real young, and they're like, they really love soccer. That's fine. That's fine. They can yeah. play soccer. But, you know, to me, as I've, I've had this discussion, you know, with a couple of friends um, in that young is soccer playing season after season a good thing? And, you know, where do you draw the line? You but, get the burnout kids. Exactly. I mean, how many times have you and I gone out and had a, had a couple of beers and stuff watching soccer, and you'll, you'll meet a guy that's, like, cheering for one of the teams on the television. Yeah, I used to play soccer for, like, 17, and I quit. I'm like, why? Because I just didn't like it. I didn't have fun with it. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm going to play until my legs fall off. That's right. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's just the, the difference of how people were putting into, into the soccer and, and – you know, that they can't, I got soccer, I got soccer, where it becomes so serious that I've met a lot of college athletes since I've been coaching college for a while, that their last game as a senior, they'll be crying upset and like, this is my last game. Are you I'm like, do you want to play club break? No, I'm done. They'll get to that far of the peak, and then when they hit their final game of the season, they just, they're done. A lot of yeah. them don't even touch a ball ever again. Yeah, and that's one thing about, you know, especially here on a show we decided to talk about is is youth soccer at the, the youngest level we can is because yeah. – if you poll Americans, you know, as as a country, how many people actually played soccer as a young kid? Yeah, and it's really high. It's I mean, a lot from higher. From YMCA to rec to club, either, you've kicked the ball sometime, even in gym class. Them leagues where you get that T-shirt that yeah. might be one different color, and you're on that team, you're on that team, and yep. you know it's like a swarm of bees running around the field <laughs> kicking yeah. the ball. The number's high, but you know we can talk about the drop off and you know just going from there. That low soccer, the low level soccer, which is important, you know. Like you just said, and I'm sure we agree, you know, we talk soccer. Is if you're not loving the game, then you're going to – where's the dropout? Yeah. And I think the neat part about our sport, obviously, it's a favorite sport of you and I, that that it works so much on the level of high income, middle income, low income, because really all you need is a ball and some space. Like at the school – I work at a school in Chester, and we have Soccer for Success comes in. It's part of the U.S. Soccer's youth program that comes into schools. They're playing soccer because we don't have any fields at the school, Matt. They play soccer two to three days a week with little tiny pug goals on a basketball court. It's a concrete court, but the kids are having fun. That's right. They're playing in sneakers and jeans. It doesn't matter, but they're kicking a ball around, and all they need is a ball. Right. And then, you know, let's face it, when, when me and you were kids, to see that, like, iconic soccer player, now you look, you know, you, you see commercials on ESPN, yeah. Fox, you know, the – you know, to Michael Bradley and, you know, your star national team player. Back then, we, you know, we talk about it every week where we had to actually rec VHS record games Yeah, from late night. You know, there, there were times that. where you only watch, a, a, I'm talking, I could count on my hand how many soccer games I saw in one year. But you'd watch the same game over and over and over. That's how much, You knew the outcome, but you'd still be watching on the edge of your seat. That's funny. You know, so still to the fans out there, I still want to see if anybody reach out. If you can find it out there, best of red card. John had mentioned that, that there's a VHS tape you got back in a best of red cards. It was a series. It was like <laughs> if I should hop on eBay or Amazon the, or something like that. You know, the hockey guy, Don Cherry, rock him, sock him. It's like <laughs> yeah. the hockey, like greatest hits. But this was soccer. It's like you greatest know, tackles, red cards and, <laughs> and harsh fouls of like 1989. 
Wow. Yeah, it was. That's hardcore. That's when the shorts were short, dude. Shorts were short. So you're going in with a tackle, long. you're risking yourself. Yeah, it was a I'm lot just of, saying. <laughs> the mullet kept you safe in the back. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, to remind everybody out there, you're listening to WPPM 106.5 FM. This is World Sports Show. John DeCruz Show and Charlie Flo. So, a lot to dip into in the community. Speaking of community, there was some unity down in South Philadelphia at the Unity Cup that was at the Philly Stadium. And pregame, starting at noon, they had a whole international food truck fest. Went down there, got some delicious food, met some really cool people down there. And, hey, ran into the mayor. It is very interesting. The mayor is beyond approachable. He came up to me and a city official and said, hey, my name's Jim. Very approachable. <laughs> like, we chatted for a while, and he's one of the main organizers of this event of having – 32 ethnic teams compete the same exact style of the World Cup. The only difference is there wasn't a third-place game. So 63 matches, 800 players, all Philadelphians from all different walks. I mean, you had it broken up like a World Cup. I mean, what I thought was neat was since they really hit some of the ethnic groups in Philadelphia area, they went for a lot of the groups that kind of had a large population. Like, for example, Vietnam. They had a team, never been in the World Cup. You look at like teams like Laos had a team. Countries like Ivory Coast that have only been in two World Cups. So, and Liberia's only been in, I don't, no, I don't think Liberia's qualified for one. No, they have not qualified for one World Cup. So, you look at a lot of these nations that represent such a large part of our culture in Philadelphia, but to jump on a field and share that common bond of trying to play for this one cup to play, gosh, to play soccer in the Philly Stadium. You know, I, I was very envious of those young men yes, uh, on Saturday. Yeah, I'll tell you what, though. You know, this past couple of weeks in Philadelphia, we've met really good weather. Oh, soccer, man. Soccer weather, it's a, it's, a, it's a bonus. I mean, and especially Citizens Bank Park, free free parking to get in, that was a, another bonus. So. Yeah, that's what Jim Kenny was saying in our interview, that free parking and a free game. You don't. How many times do you find out in Philly? Yeah, so it, it was a good um, – Good outing for the people. I can just see next year, I mean, the way the the finale turned out, that it's going to be a, a bigger event. Well, we uh, did have the thing going to... against us. Mass Transit was on strike this past weekend, and yeah, we have a lot of people that were taking the Broad Street down. But I think the word's out there now, and we put a video up there, and you can see the fans that showed up, they were loud. Well, people are going to realize, hey, we missed out on something fun. We're, we'll be there next year. Yeah, I think I was uh, I was attracted by the, the food trucks and the, the give-outs in the beginning. <laughs> Aren't we all? Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, and they were they were serving concessions there during the game, and it was just a, a lot of fun. I mean, it was a 1-0 victory to Ivory Coast, but we had several dingers. I believe Liberia, Liberia hit the post, what, two to three times, and Ivory Coast hit the post, too, so... It was a, a very entertaining match, and, and as far as, you know, when people think, hey, this is an amateur game, no, the, the intensity and the skill level was a lot higher than I expected, to be honest. Uh, both teams were... Very well prepared, very well trained. And I mean, if you looked at it, the, the you know, pregame regiment, just like the pros come out, you know, it's it was a very high level. Like if you came there to watch a game, you wouldn't think, you know, hey, and the crowd was into the game. the The skill level is that good, where the crowd was actually, you know, every. Play. And it was a very educated crowd too. <laughs> very educated crowd. Um, referee in the head, you know, very good referee staff there. Um, it, it was good, you know, all the way around. But you know, during the game, we can quick recap the game. And you know, like you said, it was a one nothing Ivory Coast win, an early set piece goal. I, I don't even about have twenty two yards out. About twenty two yards out, a, a nice curling shot into the lower yeah. left corner or lower right corner. Lower sorry. right corner, but you know, had some whip on the ball, got it in there, and you know, it was a. But the game didn't die out after the goal. Um, both teams were attacking. A lot of wood, a lot of frame. A couple, yeah, a couple of woodwork shots. Yeah, even Liberia scored yeah. two goals that were disallowed. One was from offside, so it's a, it was that edge of a game that, I mean, a lot of lot of fouls, physical. And when I see a game that that's physical, they're not playing dirty. They they want to play that much to win the cup. No, it was um, the whistles. There was you know there was there was fouls committed, but it was more of going the ball fouls rather than going the man fouls. You know that's they, true. They're going hard. They want to win that ball. Go, it was going the ball. That's right. And um, you know, hopefully next week we can get some more on you know the the technical and I say technical and tactical. We can break that down a little bit further. Maybe have a couple guest on or two. What's neat about Junior Lone Stars? That's one of the clubs that made up a lot of the Liberian and Ivory Coast players. Is that a lot of them end up playing in, in, in a match together on Sunday. That's the amazing part 
of soccer, how it brings communities together. That's right. A lot of these guys that form these different national teams ended up playing in a club game together on Sunday. Yeah. So it's it's very neat. So everybody that came out there, thank you for all your support for the Unity Cup. And big shout-out to the city of Philadelphia, Jim Kenny for putting it on, Bill Salvador, um, Catherine Ott level She's the head and commissioner of Parks and Recs here in Philadelphia. Did a great job. Uh, everybody involved. I'm forgetting names. I know I'll, it'll it'll hit me later, and I'll hit you on social media thanking you for all you did and all the sponsors that really chipped in to make this possible. We talked about that without people hating on soccer jerseys sometimes because they got a big sponsor on the chest, but it brings in the bucks to make it possible. Well, I hate to tell you, you know, if we if I do win Powerball, there's going to be some jerseys out there with my face on it. <laughs> Is that maybe, maybe just the back, really? of, back of my head on the back. I think we <laughs> joked about this. If, if one of us won Powerball, Buy a soccer team, just put your face on the jersey. That's it. Nobody's done that yet. No, no million out there. Like, like Mark, you surprised Mark Cuban hasn't done something like that. Even buying a little <laughs> minnow, ten thousand dollar club, like you know, F, whatever. To, like a third division English not, team, and just not even that. Just like a, a club team in a sport and social. Like, hey, you want me to, you know, I'll, I'll buy your. It's team. True. Who would say no to that? Not me. That's a good question out there, fans. Hit us up on the mailbag, Twitter, okay. Facebook. Okay. If, if you have a soccer club out there, I don't care if it's a youth club. And somebody says, I'll put my face on your jersey. <laughs> Everybody has a selling price, I believe, right? Hey, if it's uh, <laughs> 20 bucks. Uh, yeah. How much would it take, John, for you to wear my face on your shirt? Stop. <laughs> I went there, man. So For a season? <laughs> I don't know. A season. It'd be tough. Ten to plus say. games to wear a jersey with my face on it. If it's a nice uh, Adidas kit, like pro model. Oh, now you're picking out the, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll I'll let, no, you can pick out whatever design you want. My face has got to be on it. Oh, man. Well, at least would be intimidating. <laughs> the other team might cough up a couple. It's like, do I get to pick the face that you make on the face? Yeah, right. <laughs> so we're going to turn the page to a little bit of women's soccer. Um, it was a big blockbuster trade that happened after the show. Not right after the show, but. They waited for us after yeah. they walked the air. <laughs> Thanks, Perfect. dude. Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> Allie Krieger was traded from the Washington Spirit over to the Orlando Pride. I mean, you can't blame a player for wanting to go down to Orlando. No, I mean, let's take a step back. I think Orlando, they're looking to win. Tom Sermani, head coach. They, they want to win. Ownership I mean, of, you know, their MLS owning team. They want to win today, not I mean, not next week. They want to win today. It's good for the media to pick up. I mean, you're getting a national team player. Yeah. I mean. World Cup, won a World Cup. Played in Germany. I'm fluent in Germany, and she played for, I mean, she played amazing, and she played in Germany, and it came back to MLS. It was with Washington, but I think this is a power move. He might say she's getting a little older, but when you look at backs, older means wiser and understanding and seeing the game. So I think it's a, it's a massive pickup for Orlando. It's good, but the only thing I don't like is older means losing a step. This is true. So wiser, yes. Losing a step, no. But, I mean, her game has been – she's been a destroyer her whole life. I mean, yeah. it looks like a lot of forwards will shy away from a couple – you know, getting the ball and trying to go one-on-one because she will step up. But her working – Alec Krieger working the wing means you've got all – instant offense now on the wing. We, we've seen her be able to push up, and you can slot her even to a winger midfield if you have to, depending on how your back line is. I mean, they got Tony Presley back there, a mainstay in the back, so you've got a good center back. So It's a luxury to have. Uh, and work Ashley on the Harrison trails, goal, right? you have the goalkeeper of the year, one of the best goalkeepers in the world in goal. That's right. Helps a little bit, and they played together in Washington, so that does help when you have a back that you've played with, so you've got a couple seasons under your belt. So... That's the big news in the NFL. They are in the off season, like we said before. The European women's leagues are going on. The big one to really pay attention is the Australian league. That is made up of probably the most NWSL players. And being their games on ESPN three, there's no going around finding crazy torrents on the internet trying to find the broadcast games. Bang! Just go to ESPN. They're they're broadcasting all the women's games. So I mean, can't beat that with a stick. And I believe they're. The replays are on demand as well. I think so, yeah. I'll have to go back and look. I haven't actually looked. I have to watch right. some of the games live, you know, and those nights where you can't sleep, pull out the phone and bang, soccer. It's good. It's the source. So, and then also you told me about FIFA releasing its its short list of 10 players of the year. I mean, it is. Well, I wouldn't say it's an off year. There was the Olympics this summer, but I was surprised to not see, you know, I mean, we did see some some players that I thought might show up in it, but I mean, you have players like Marta and Carly Lloyd that show up every time. Perennials, absolutely. Yeah, so some players like that, Christine Sinclair. You feel like no matter what kind of year those players have, they will be on that short list. Well, it's kind of a respect factor. The one thing that we learned when we were going over show notes is how terrible our English is in pronouncing international names. 
especially yeah. speak a little Spanish and English, but man, <laughs> throw names, a couple umlauts over her name. We just can't nail, and it, that, that's a good thing it, with the mailbag is whenever we make a mispronunciation, we get absolutely crucified for it, and that's good. It means, yeah. hey, you're listening, and you know we we could tell you firsthand that you know some of these names on here. If you, if, I don't know who can get a hundred percent on pronunciations. But that's one good thing is we'll uh, to bring that that the guy or gal into the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Name that player. Na- yeah, right. That actually be a fun game. We have to get the media. We just have flashcards. Media guide with the correct pronunciations. We've been butchered there before on TV. <laughs> when you get the pronunciation guide. Quick story. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bring it back. But I'm not gonna mention uh, <laughs> names or places. But me and Charlie did play by play for a couple teams going back in our our history of back media. when we had a lot more hair. <laughs> back when we had hair. That's that's why we stopped doing TV because because of, of the age losing the hair. So we've actually went by the media guide for pronunciations oh and had God. the player come yeah. up. Hey, that's not how you pronounce my name. I mean, he had you know his family <laughs> screaming at him. Tell to tell to play by play. That's not my name. I'm like. Whoa, whoa, it's yeah, the, on the, the brakes, guy. Bro. Yeah. So, so that was a funny story. Good guy. Yeah, I remember Quick the fix. one player, his name was Vorsberg. I'm with the F. And people kept, during the live broadcast, started messaging us saying, his name's not Forsberg, it's Vorsberg. And I was, I don't know why my Vorsberg would sound like Forsberg. And it's, I'm out here peeking the mic out, you know. <laughs> yeah. Production nightmare. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so keep, keep your eyes on that. The winner will be crowned, the FIFA Football Player of the Year for the women's side will be at a ceremony in Zurich, Switzerland, on the 9th of January, 2017. So start marking your calendars. And then one more thing I want you guys out there to check out on, if you haven't already, check out the voting criteria, the how the winner is chosen for the actual award. I believe it's the coaches and captains of every fifth team. I've got the explanation right here if you like so me to read l- it. Let me you. see if I'm right. So the coaches and captains is 50% of the vote for every national team which is published at the end because I remember seeing last times, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Yeah, it says here, three. the winner of the best FIFA women's player for 2006 to be chose through a combined voting process, which is 50% of the decision we based on the choices okay. of the captains right. and head coach from women's national teams around the globe. Yep. And you and I know quite a few, so maybe we can influence the vote, John. Stop. <laughs> Suddenly, some player like a right in ballot gets in. Like, dude, I got like three caps yeah. last year. Like Charlie Flo. <laughs> it's like, dude. Yeah. The other 50 percent will be determined by online public balloting and submissions okay. from selected group of over 200 media represented around the world. Well, bang. We can be in that. We've, we've been FIFA approved before. But we're not select. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, I didn't read. Select so, group. Select. So, uh, mm-hmm. Not just a group. And that, and it's select half, group. And well, that's crud. half. <laughs> Half of the ballot, the ballot is a select group of two hundred. See, it's funny when it says online public ballot and submission, so it's like you got to read the fine print. It's no stamp; <laughs> you, you can't like. Dude, I'd hit refresh, vote, refresh, vote, refresh, vote. It's like yeah. the old stuff the ballot when you used to go to Phillies game. Like, hey, let's get this guy in the All Star game. I'm like he's batting two twenty five, man. Stuff the ballot. <laughs> I mean, in a recent couple years in different sports, it has happened. Yeah, stuff the ballot, you know. So, um. That's about our news in the women's professional and international. It says still keep your eyes on the news because the U.S. women are coming up close to playing Romania. We'll keep you updated on all the new young faces you'll see in that game. Reminder, you're listening to World Sports Show on WPPM 106.5. I'm Charlie Flo, and alongside me is John Crucio, wearing two hats tonight. That's right. You always wear two hats. Two baseball hats. So. I look like Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> We're going to turn the page to the MLS playoffs. They had a big Sunday. I think it was amazing that they went head-to-head with NFL football, but it actually kind of worked out a lot of the breaks between the NFL games. Bang. MLS, MLS, MLS. I mean, it was a quadruple header. I think ooh, I might think we have to wait about two weeks for the ratings to come out and see how they actually did compare it to. I mean, I, just talking to different people, I get a little bit of uh, mixed feelings about – why go up against NFL football, but, uh, you know, I hear, hey, if, if they're out watching football, they're going to have it at a bar with the game on. Then I hear, hey, you, if they're watching football, then they're not watching soccer. So it's mixed. A lot of it's target audience. I mean, a lot of it's yeah, people exactly. that want to watch soccer or junkies for soccer. It's it's interesting. So we're going to go through these little MLS playoffs, and then we're going to dig into the mailbag. I mix the order up. You know, I guess I just can't read. <laughs> Sometimes they go off script. Yeah, who needs a menu? <laughs> So, 
let's let's dive into it. Let's let's match up the matchups. We had the second leg of all these. It's a two leg process. Aggregates how you get through. Colorado, LA. LA came in with a one zip lead. Colorado notches up it up with a, a pretty amazing goal, and then bang, good old PKs. Yeah, PKs. Tammy Howard. Loser goes home. Yeah, all right. What can I say? Tim Howard comes up with massive PK saves and. I mean, it was interesting to see Ashley Cole for L.A. First ever competitive PK. Did not know that until watching the game. Okay. So, is, that, is that good or bad? I think that's bad. Is it defender? If, you, if you're, your season's relying on a guy that's never taken a competitive. They said competitive. When I hear that, does that mean you've taken non-competitive PKs? To like take the stats from practice? First competitive PK. Is that like <laughs> the goalie's a little bit tired today? I mean, it's such a they don't just not say really competitive. First, yeah, first PK. No, not his first PK. His first competitive PK. Right. I'm like, oh, it, oh, it counts or something. Yeah, and Union fans are pretty familiar with the guy, uh, Sebastian Latou. So. He, he slotted home one man. So I mean, that that's one thing that guy did, which which is a bonus he was money. Whenever fight. he lined up for a PK, money. That's I it. mean, from his first game wearing a Union jersey or his first game in Philadelphia. In the city of Philadelphia. So, how many times you can say that about the Union? That's right. So, looking at the next game, we had Red Bulls playing Montreal. Montreal came in with an aggregate lead and just took it to Red Bulls. Ended up walking away 2-1 on the game, 3-1 on the aggregate. So, New York Red Bulls are out again. No cup. No cup. Yeah, Cupless again. Cupless years. Since 1996, no cup. Mm. One game that really didn't shock me, the result who went through, what shocked me is the result. If you had a money line out there, I don't think any money line would have said 5-0 Toronto over NYFC. I mean, I don't think any playoff game, if you were to say five goals, maybe even combined, just because that's, you know, unless you're looking at aggregate, you know, second leg of an aggregate yeah. game where you have to score and you're just – as you know, you have to make up four goals. They weren't in that. Yeah, they weren't in a deep of a hole. But I think it's just kept digging their hole deeper and deeper. They walked away seven zero. Basically, put a touchdown on them. Yeah, I got mean, a team from Toronto putting touchdowns on New York. I mean, at what point do you got to go back to your? You know, I, I could see you're down if you're NYCFC. Okay, we got to score a ton of goals. We got to play strictly offense. I mean, this is a disregard defense because the goal don't matter. We have to score and they can't. And it just. I think this is up. a team where Josie Outdoors found his touch right now. He is just a man on a mission right now. He's just putting anything home right now. And that's, to me, I'm excited because I'm hoping it's going to transition over to the field for the USA when we play Mexico Friday. I'm yeah. just hoping. That's yet to happen, but I'm sure every American soccer fan would love it. Oh, my gosh. It would be great. And then one game that was actually a pretty exciting game. Dallas ended up beating Seattle 2-1, but Seattle went through 4-0 in the aggregate because they came with a three-zip lead. I mean, Tough year for Dallas, but not really. I mean, they won the Shield, which at the end of the day means nothing, but they did win the Open Cup. So it's a very successful season for Dallas. I mean, everybody wants the MLS Cup. That is the cup they want. The other hardware, they're good to have, but you really want the MLS Cup. Yeah, going for the treble. Yeah, they were that close. So hats off to them. Great season. So we'll keep you updated. It'll be Colorado for Seattle in the West and an all-Canadian Eastern final. I mean, first time. Either of them have had success in the playoffs, gotten the playoffs, and we're guaranteed to have a Canadian team in a final. That's good, eh? Eh. A good old drug by coming out there and causing some harm, man. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. I think that I actually will will find that very entertaining seeing two Canadian sides go against each other. Especially that you know, it's um one of the greater rivalries, Canadians, Maple Leafs, you know, they Yeah, it just has the two cities have such a history themselves. They've seen how it transitions into the soccer game. No matter what sport it is, they have rivalries, yeah, yeah. whether CFL or NHL. Just flip-flop the colors. And then, <laughs> exactly. <you know. laughs> We're going to dig in to the mailbag, John, if that's okay with you. That's right. Some some tough questions for you tonight, John. Mailbag at worldsportshow.com. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep it a little bit low tonight since we, you know, you know I don't know. If it's it, election night, you know. It sounds like the, ro <laughs> the roaring stopped out there. <laughs> it might actually be like. 28 days later, we walk out of the studio. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, much. it was just craziness when we came in here. And then when it just leaves, just a couple of rappers and some tumbleweeds going by. Yeah, it's hard to believe this was just a mass of a million people. Yeah, it's a, you know, it's interesting down here. It's, you know, pretty much when we leave the studio, when the show is over at 10 o'clock, it's very quiet out there. What, what about that also blows my mind about Hillary Clinton doing this rally here with Obama, that she's doing a rally at midnight in North Carolina. That's great. Uh, Got to do it. I More mean, power to you, man. I got a couple miles to get home. Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't know. She might beat you to it because you got a little bit of walk there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's dig into the old mailbag. Mailbag at worldsportshow.com. You can always tweet us, Instagram us, whatever you need. Whatever means you need to get a hold of us for a question, and we'll get to it. All right. And then Jill from South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina, to be exact. Nice. Who will win the NCAA Women's Tournament? Ooh. I know we're going to dig into that in a short bit, but who will actually win the whole thing? Wow, so we're getting a, you know, before we even tackle it, we're going to get a, a finals, final final. Like Yeah, she wants the champion of the NCAA. Well, that bracket came out today. There's some people that are happy and some people that are a little upset. So I have a feeling that Jill's going to be picking South Carolina. They're all the, one of the one seeds. They had an amazing season. Now the SC, S, SCC, I can't even say it right, SEC. There we go. 18-1-1. So, Jill, I think you're... Gamecocks have a very good chance of winning the whole thing, but somehow I'm actually thinking Florida might pull it off. That's my pick. If I got to pick a team to win it all, I'm picking Florida. All right, Joe. So I'm going to put a, a very educated guess into this one. I'm going to hold my pen about six inches above the paper and I'm going to drop it. Whatever I get the dot on, that's what I'm going with. <laughs> that's about as accurate as you get. That's what you call an expert analysis. All right, where, do you, where is it going to land, John? Where did it land? Virginia. UVA. UVA, three seed. All right. And that's not even a bad pick. And then once they win, I'm going to break it down. Why? Why? I tactically hate. That's why because they played this. How high was that pin above the paper? (laughs) Was that a six inch drop or more of a? Hey, I'll throw it across the room. (laughs) Six millimeter, millimeter drop. But yeah, I think Florida. John pick UVA. A little later in the show, we're going to break down our final four. Who we think is going to go through? Jill, South Carolina. Good old Charleston. Thank you for the email. Appreciate your time. That's right. To go along, and a lot of people wrote in just like, hey. I'm from here, listening to the show. So basically, I'm going to give shout outs. I'm yeah. going to give you a couple check ins. Okay. Kim from Newtown, Pennsylvania. I got Joe from Philly. Amy S. from Reading, Pennsylvania. Hey, that's gotta a be, nice little town, hey, man. I mean, you used to work for a team out there. That's right. Not too far. So, and I got a, a long distance one, Kim R., Atlanta, Georgia. So it's good to hear people listening on the app. So Probably a lot warmer down there. I guess, you know, following us from social media blast when put it out there. Hey, we're well, we've brought a lot of fans from other previous locations That's and right. wherever we go, they follow. And funny is, you know, on the mailbag, we, we take the good with the bad. We are very thick skin and we can take it. <laughs> when we mess up, we'll be the first ones to admit it. But this is going back. You know, we have a listener who kind of likes to make fun of us and needle us and poke us around a little bit. Uh, the guy wrote, your old pal, Red Bull Ron. Oh God, Red Bull Ron. So, That's because we were, we were broadcasting out of central Jersey at the time. So so Red Bull Ron. We were right on a divider line between Philadelphia Union fans and New York Red Bull fans, and a guy <laughs> would just blast us every week. Send that know. guy a gift back. <laughs> he, I know he's he got tears today. His way of being polite is being mean to us, so I take that as you know a warm <laughs> welcome. So, hey, man. Any, that, any New York out. fan that sends you an action email, that's polite because they actually took the time out for you. As long as, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll try and read it on the air, so take it easy. So I see how Ron's me. doing when he has to share his team with another New York team, no, how that's so all going to go down. All right. World Sport, uh, world, mailbag at worldsportshow.com. I'm going to throw this one to you because I think you're, out of both of us, you're more the expert on the English Premiership. The Prem. English Premier League. <laughs> the Prem. So, um, I'll this answer is one that came in from Al. Didn't leave a name where. So, leave where this way we can give you a little, yeah. give your uh, area a shout out. So, it says, do you think Liverpool or Chelsea can win the Premiership title? I think both of them have a legit shot. The both of the way that they're playing right now, I was able, actually, fortunate to watch both of those games this weekend. Last two weeks, Chelsea's just annihilated and hammered their opponents, and they're playing off of pure energy and believing in each other. That's the one thing both teams have in common. You know that Liverpool's, you know, they have a newer coach, not a new coach, but you know, with Klopp, the way he's inspired his young men, that energy to believe in yourself. You know, we don't see that from a lot of coaches. A lot of coaches, they bring this. Like the guy you talk about is Jose. You know, I like Chelsea, but I, I don't like particularly like Jose as a coach. He's a very arrogant coach, and a lot of his players don't like him. But what I've seen with Chelsea and Liverpool, he makes his players believe in themselves. I mean, you're taking squads that both of these previous coaches had. They had success, but then when they hit the hit the wall, man, they looked bad. There was games last year where Chelsea looked bad. Previous to Klopp, Liverpool games they just looked bad and flat. But when you have a coach who believes in you and shows that energy on the field. Like, how can you not be a fan of Klopp? How can you not 
the amount of energy and passion of, of a coach that cares and lives and dies on the field with his players, it makes you want to work that hard for the players. So, yes, I do think Chelsea or Liverpool have a shot, and I think they have a better shot than, you know, like a, a, um, a Leicester last year. That I think the big turning point is where will the standings be come, let's say, January 15th. Look at the standings then. We'll re-review it. I think that's the best way to look at it. Look at it about mid-season. Let's see where they are at their form. Can they maintain this for an entire season? So are we going to go with the uh, with, with a Godfather analogy? Is he, would you rather be loved or hated? Are we going to do it a little Machiavelli? You know, where where are we going to go? Are we going to go a little basketball? You want to be a? I think loved, but also feared at the same time that 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 you will love me as a coach. Okay. But if you don't perform, you don't play. Hey, I mean, it looks like you got to be one or the other. I mean, yeah. there's no. You know, firm but fair. It looks like these coaches at that level, you're either loved or you're not loved. And yeah. You're 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 not like disciplinarian, but you're firm. Well, that's the thing with with Jose. Do you, did you love him or did you love the success that he brought? And then when things hit the fan for Chelsea last year, then you got a lot of players and he not liking them, them liking him. So it does make you wonder that did I ever like you or I just like the success you brought me? Right. So in you know, in my opinion, I think that. It varies by club. I mean, you got you can have a good developmental coach who's very fair, but at that, you know, when you're managing all stars, guys that are like very high level, world class players, big salary, very egos running here. I mean, do you really need a, a hug, or do you need hey, get on there and start yeah, performing? These, these are grown ups. You're all grown ups so, now. So you know, I think it's just that formula. But I mean, but did you answer the question? Yes or no. Yes. Each okay. Those, I, I give them about a let's see, one of those two teams winning the whole thing, seventy five percent chance. No kidding. Who has a bigger payroll? That's a really good question. I'm gonna say Chelsea right now. That's I don't know the numbers, but I think a lot of Chelsea just looking at it, yeah. inherited a lot of players that, that and they did win a championship two seasons ago. So Well, last year, who you know. Yeah, Leicester won it with like what, fifteen bucks? <laughs> Basically, like 17 pounds. <laughs> exactly. 17. Basically, your weeks of groceries. <laughs> it's like a train ride there. <laughs> but, you know, it's, you know, the odds, you know, some people made a fortune betting, you know, as, as it, like, not even being serious. Hey, let's go in, you know, because uh, in England, betting is, it's common. So let's go throw a couple bucks on, uh, or let's go throw a couple quid on Leicester. And hey, it came out to be a nice little return. Yeah. Couple, wow. A couple thousand betting, you know, yeah, 10 tough. quid. Help a house with the amount of money. We've got some random little, little, little back and forth. Let's 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 do this one. I like this one right here. Um, Victor from Fishtown. Let's let's hit it. This is something he's going to hit hard. Fishtown. Predict the final score of USA Mexico Friday in the hex World Cup qualifier, Columbus, Ohio. No kidding. Uh, predict it. Mm, that's a tough one, John. <laughs> For those who love soccer, it's. It is a score that has repeated itself. If it doesn't repeat, if that score doesn't repeat itself, I'll think something's wrong with the universe. Well, and that would be amazing if it actually finished two nothing to the U.S. I don't think it will, but will the U.S. win? They have a good shot, but to finish two zero, which it has, has finished for years, good ten years straight running in World Cup qualifiers in Columbus, Ohio, Dosa zero. We've been seeing the ads on television for the past two weeks, and that's the chant you hear, Dos a Zero. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, both – you've actually been to a – But Yeah, a, I, I was at the 2005 game. qualifier. Yeah, September 2005 in Columbus, Ohio, and I was part of the – I was in the Sam's Army section chanting. I mean, I was, gosh, third row from the field behind the goal and just that energy and, and that was still in, in, in the – I wouldn't say the infant stages of the MLS. The MLS was only – what nine years old then but so that was one of the first ever all soccer soccer specific stadiums so soccer pacific stadiums yeah so it was before the scoreboard caught on fire yeah. <laughs> i don't know why i just thought of that that yeah. was like two seasons ago <laughs> you know and um uh, for all you football fans that are out there listening the lamar hunt did have a lot to do with soccer and it's early stages yeah, you know kansas city guy kansas city guy like the chiefs anything to do with that yeah. Very, very influential. I mean, the U.S. Cup is named after him. So, I mean, it's it's too easy to say 2-0. Let's say 2-1 USA. That's what I'm going to go with, 2-1 USA. I'll leave it at that. I'll, I'll give you a 2-1. So you got any more mailbag? Because I got a few on here. 
I'm going to run through real quick. We can just knock it out. Mailbag at World Sports. Boom. Show.com. I'll just give you one more. I mean, we touched on it. They had it in here. Uh, Emily writes in, who's your vote to win FIFA Player of the Year? FIFA Player of the Year. Man, it's tough. As, as much as I, I want to say Messi because he just keeps getting his teams all the way but such on the edge. I'm actually going to throw it to a player that had a lot of success in the Olympics. Um, Neymar. I think Neymar, the way that he just really put Brazil national team, even though it was the Olympics and it's kind of a U23 slash couple professionals mixed in there. I, I think Neymar deserves, you know, this year. Just the way that he really captivated his country and the way he played in the tournament, the thing won the gold. I mean, all honest, I don't think I would, you know, as a I'm pretty particular with jerseys that I would wear. Yeah. And I wouldn't wear his jersey, but his cleats he's sponsored by Jordan are pretty slick. Very, yeah, you got jump man cleats. The jump man cleats, they're pretty <laughs> slick. You got the clear soles on them. We'll rock my jersey, but you'll rock my shoes. Man, I'll, I'll tell, yeah, I'll tell you what, though. He's, but it's not his shoes, they're Jordan's. So, I mean. Man, <laughs> he must be making bank with Jordan's on, with jump man. Yeah, but he makes fun of that Jordan crying meme, but really, at the end of the day, who's crying? <laughs> I mean, I can always see that evolving into a Neymar crying meme coming up, you know. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, so. How about for women? I'm throwing that out there. I'm going to, hold on, let me, let me, I'm typing my own mailbag. Dear mailbag at worldsportshow dot com. I'm biased. I'm gonna say Carly Lloyd. Okay. She she had a she had a good year, but I mean, it, it's a tough year for you know we we didn't have U.S. women winning any type of you know hardware that was significant. So it's still you're still gonna base it on the influence of how, how impact they had on the game. So, but I mean, even player like Marta, you know, playing her game in Europe, and I think that's another thing is as, as Americans we. We pretty much just look at the NWSL. There's a lot of the European leagues that are going around out there. Marcus has such success out there. And you, you have a handful of German players you can name, a handful of French players, even some English players out there that had success. And it was just weird the way the Olympics were set up that we didn't see an English team because the Olympics, England does not compete as England. They compete as Great Britain. So there was a lot of ball dropping in that sense of why neither of them had a team. They did have one of the London games where they had to create Team GB, and they didn't continue that success because we saw such a great success of the English team. So, I mean, you always got players like Kim Little, Fishlock, that are always going to be mentioned in those names. So we'll see. And some of those names that I just mentioned were not on the finalist list. But like I said, we saw how the voting is determined after the shortlist, but I still would like to research how the shortlist is determined. Right. You know, I think this is a lot of yeah. players that – Avi Wambach showed up in there basically when she said she was going to retire. I mean, we had the years where she broke the international scoring record and Abby Wambach showed up there, understand it. And then she basically announces her retirement, shows up and wins something. It's more of a respect thing. You, you looked at her numbers, they weren't subpar, but sometimes, you know, these FIFA awards, you'll send a player off into the sunset. Suddenly, if a player says, I'm going to retire this year, then that player on Max, oh, we got to put them on the short list. All right. And that's just how it is. You, you learn to accept it. On both just, sides, men and women. Yeah. I so, mean, is it fair to say that Sinclair, Marta, and Lloyd are in the top 25 women ever? Yeah. Easy. Fair enough. I mean, if you had a best 11 all time, like best 11 from when women were admitted to, like, let's say since 91. I mean, the National Team's been around, but let's look at it from 91 from the first Women's World Cup. You got players like that. Lloyd will show up on there. Marta will show up in there. Sinclair, Mia Hamm, they're in the starting 11. And they will be in the starting 11 until probably past you and I have kids and our kids have kids. I mean, those are the players that are just automatics. Right. You know, so. Well, just throwing that out there for you, bud. But, you know, just looking at the list. So, now, right now, you have some top players, you know, top five players ever yeah. playing the game right now. So, it's a good time to watch. So I'll throw one more mailbag at you. Let's just go. remind you, you're listening to World Sports Show on WPPM 106.5 on your FM here in Philadelphia. As coaches, how do you guys feel about the Shield in the MLS? And even the NWSL does the Shield as well. How do you guys feel about that? It said, this was, I don't even have a name on this. Oh, it says Tom from South Philly. Tom. Hey, if it's the time that always writes in hey keep writing in man thanks and well tom goes way back to when we did yeah. shows did local shows so it's good to see him checking in so how do i feel about the shield yeah do i feel like the shield like when i run around my captain america <laughs> shield or do I, 
<laughs> this question did get me thinking that none of the shields are actually shields. If you're going to make a shield, you should at least have an arm strap or at least let the guys put it on. <laughs> True enough. It's like a big, big uh, flat spaghetti bowl. That's all it is, man. I'm just right. thinking, I'm taking this thing to Olive Garden. <laughs> Come on, man. Serve it up, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. That, that's a little insensitive. Olive Garden. More I know, man. G- giving them a plug. And, and, and any, any Philadelphia in the right mind would be, that's a violation. That's what I'm thinking right now. I live in South Philly and I don't go there. <laughs> taking a shot at Tom. That's messed up. Um, I didn't take a shot. I'm saying it's well, the shield is right. basically a salad bowl, pasta bowl. Throw some mac and cheese in that bowl. Mac and cheese. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Told you we would get the food. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, how do I think about it? I mean, supporter shield. It, you got to have an incentive for one in first place through the regular season. So, I mean, it's. Do I think that you know it's a good step in uh, you know I want to see a team win the treble. I think that'd be a, a good feat, but winning, you know, Champions League as well, winning everything would be yeah. nice. But you know, I think the winning the quattro, <laughs> the, yeah, the, the quattro. <laughs> and then how about the? Uh, isn't there a? Doesn't it take another step further to club championship? The yeah, FIFA, you're right. You're yeah. right. If you get invited to like where they've always had it in Japan for a long time, and Japan Cinco. forever or seven. Yeah, I think it was in the yeah. So realistically, it? your club can win five trophies. I mean, you're talking some other ones in England. You got your treble. I mean, you've got English. Really, have got it. You've got your League Cup, your FA Cup, your League Champions League, and then you could have the FIFA Club Championship. So you could, you could win five pieces of hardware right. for the English team. But the English teams, they don't do supporter shield. They really mock us for that because th- their regular season champion is their champion. They don't have playoffs, right? So that's where it becomes a little bit hazy because I know that. Some of the Seattle Sounders players, like you know, I joke with 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 Jess Fishlock, and th- they they get all excited and they have to really explain to them, like, no, 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 you didn't win everything. You just won. You just basically became the one seed in the playoffs. Right. You're and right. like, wait, so we didn't win at all? Like, right. now nah, there's playoffs coming up. No, I'm not busting on Fishlock. She knew what was up, but it is kind of funny. They're like, hey, we won it. Well, you didn't really win it all, but so it, it it is interesting as a coach. I think that good for your players. It's a good momentum builder. But you don't want them getting too big of a head feeling that, okay, you got to the mountain. Now let's get to the mountain top. Now, like, because players get satisfied a lot that you got to the playoffs. Are you satisfied with getting to the playoffs? As a one seed, no, you're not satisfied. It's revenue, man. Yeah, it's that's a good true. revenue builder. So I think that's it's good to get the people involved because, you know, some teams, when they crash out, you know, but just make the playoffs, you know, season tickets go down and so on and so on. So. Yeah, we have a couple more things to knock out. We don't have much show to left, but a reminder, this Friday night, 7 p.m. in Columbus, Ohio, USA men, Mexicans men national team, first game of the Hex. This is the final stages, the fifth round of the CONCACAF qualifying for the rights to go to the 2018 World Cup in Russia. That's right. Yeah. So, hey, man, do what you can, USA. Hopefully you pull off a 2-0. Any type of victory, you're in a driver's seat. Get that first game at home. So good luck to the U.S. We're going to look at the NCAA Division I, men, I mean, Women's Soccer Championship. The men ones will be out next week because they're still playing a lot of their championships within their conferences now. But we're going to break it down and give you our final four picks. I already kind of made my pick that I think is going to win it all, and that's Florida. And they're coming out of the bracket that has where well, their first game is against Florida Gulf Coast University, Wisconsin, UConn. There's some big big teams in there, Utah, TCU. I know you're handling two of the – there's four brackets, really. It's four regions, and I know you were looking at a couple of the other regions. Well, I think that, you know, going back to the mailbag, I think my pen drop technique is going to be my, my um, official – way i'm going to determine uva oh you, oh yes how you're going to finish, finish that, out that's your, how. So your final four uh, or actually you're picking two and i'm picking two to nah, determine the final four that, that wasn't you know all, all <laughs> joking back here but yeah don't discount uva even though I, the pen did land on uva I, I would not be surprised if uva wins the whole thing so i'm telling you acc and sec teams and pac-10 teams you you don't have to even drop a pen on them it's not even upset when any of them beat a team right right about that i think the one thing that's very disheartening is is dayton beat our local st joe's women's team by a score of 7-0 in the a10 championship so you're talking st joe's team that flirted with national rankings all season does not get invited to the tournament and dayton sneaks in at 9-9-3 so they have a 500 season 
win their I mean, that's how you get in a tournament. You you win your tournament final seven zero. Yep. Then they gotta take a trip to Ohio State. So, so not too far on the bus, but that's a tough one. But hey, it's a winnable game. You talk about the confidence you have from winning a game seven zero. And like we had said earlier, when the email from Jill from Charleston, South Carolina eighteen one and one. I mean, it, it's really hard to not predict them to go to the Final Four. But I really think that Clemson's going to sneak in there. I think Clemson's going to sneak in there. And UCLA, I like what UCLA did this year, but they go up against a tough West Virginia. But I think West Virginia's going to edge them out. So I've probably got Clemson as my final and. West Virginia, and I already said Florida's going to win it all. There you go. And I'll tell you one thing that's good. You know, I like a lot of the college networks, the accessibility of watching the games. Oh, man, it's great. So there's no excuse not to watch the games. I mean, DVR, VHS, was it VCR? Yeah, what's a VCR? Get that tape. (laughs) The games are available. They still sell them. And looking on the division three women's side we want to give a couple shout outs to a couple local teams from the east coast region here philadelphia and the outside of philadelphia arcadia 17 win arcadia 17 3 and 0 arcadia really nice player i coached on that team veronica garcia i want to shout out to her coached her before and rowan 16 1 and 2 will go through they're going to actually play christopher newport in the first round that's where i was born and raised it's christopher newport weird thing they they bought my high school <laughs> no Christopher kid. Newport University bought my high school. Check that so, out. interesting, my high school is now part of a college. So, there are friends of mine that just kind of feel like they stayed in the same school for eight years. So, <laughs> And also TCNJ, the College of New Jersey coming in. They play Mary Wood. And Scranton got through. Swarthmore goes through. So, those are your local teams on the Division Three side on the women's teams. Penn State Burks. Yep, that's one of your. That's where you're. You're alumni. I'm alumni. You're oh, alum. I'm almost alumni. <laughs> almost alum. Swarthmore getting in there too. Looking on the Division Three men's side, Christopher Newport, where I'm from. Big shout out to them. Local Philly team, Haverford and Rowan both get in on the Division Three men's side. The Division Two came out moments before the show started, so we didn't have enough time to really prep and break down them, but. A couple of the local teams, Westchester, on the both sides get in. So big shout-out to both Westchester teams, men and women. That's right. Perennial powerhouse or perennial good soccer programs. And hopefully in the future we can have some. Hey, we helped Philadelphia University. We, we can say we kind of helped um, Westchester men because they beat us. I mean, they beat us 3-0. So, you know, <laughs> they're not going to come thank me. Hey, yeah, right. thanks for letting us beat you. You know, we got an NCAA tournament. So. People out there listening, you're listening to World Sports Show on WPPM 106.5 FM. He's John DeCrisio. I'm Charlie Flo. Send any questions to the show to mailbag at worldsportshow.com. Any final thoughts, John? Get out there to that rally. Rally? Yeah, that, just, that, my Southern came out really bad there. <laughs> yeah, you talk about your high school and then, you know. <laughs> bang, man. Well, dang. I just got to worry about taking a long walk. <laughs> It's a pretty long walk to my car tonight. Get, get to the car. <laughs> but, yeah, well, thanks again for everybody listening. Just keep firing away. Yeah, election Eve night, whatever you do, right, left, liberal, conservative, in the middle, yeah. like soccer, go vote. You can write in You can write in um, Carly Lloyd if you're ballot if you want. Yeah. You know? And also people <laughs> wanted some um, Facebook Live. I shot one just hit last week, and they want to get that back on. Boom. So, so we might give it a try, but then again, we are radio people. That's why we're not on TV. That's all we have the faces for radio. Right. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to wrap it up. We'll be back same time next week. World Sports Show on WPPM 106.5 FM. I'm Charlie Flo. He's John DeCrisio. See you next week.